Hello, my name is Eugene Bryce of Bryce Energy Services. Today I'd like to show you our new solar panel calculator. So, start by going to Bryce Energy Services. So, this is our website. Uh, feel free to have a good look through. Um, we have plenty of information on the business, our partners, our training videos, myself, and details on how to contact us at the bottom of the page. So our new solar panel output and return on investment calculator. So we already have a carbon footprint calculator for scope one, two, and three an electric vehicle charging calculator to understand how the cost of equipment and charging of EVs will affect your business. So this is our solar panel calculator. So simply just click and it takes you to our solar panel calculator page. What I'll do is just zoom in a little so it fills the screen a bit. Yeah, that's not too bad. So solar panel calculator, the, the purpose is to calculate the expected power in kilowatt hours from the panels, but also um, a likely financial payback. So we start with the number of panels you'd like to install. Now it might be a bit of an iteration between the number of panels and the available square meters you have. So if you're planning a roof panel, uh, measure how many square meters you have. And you know, if you have 100 square meters, uh, then 50 panels may be required. Please note that this assumes no free space. So if you need gaps between your panels for whatever, you have to add that into the estimated um, surface area. So you may have rows of four and then a space and another row of four. So we'll start with, we want to install, uh, say a thousand panels. And then we have to enter the watt rating of the proposed solar panels. And typically, um, domestic, maybe up to 300 more commercial, maybe up to 450 watt. So we'll just stick with um, uh, 350 watt. So then we have maximum potential solar panel. So a thousand panels at 350 watt gives you a 350 kilowatt potential. So that's the potential maximum power output from the solar panels. Estimated area of panels. So we've assumed that each panel is about one meter by two meters. So that gives us 2000 square meters. And the estimated weight of the panels. Each panel is about 21 kilograms. Um, it does vary along with the, the size. They're not exactly one meter by two meters, but just to give a feel for the likely weight. So a thousand panels on, on the roof of a, a large warehouse. 21,000 kilograms or 21 metric tons. That's quite a lot. So do consider structural surveys and the strength of the roof under loading conditions, i.e. if there's a gale blowing or lots of snow. Then we have the, the cost of the solar panel hardware. So we're assuming it's one pound per watt, which is uh, I'll say a finger in the air rule of thumb. Sometimes it's a little bit more expensive and um, de really depends on where the panels are going to be installed. So if you need to um, put scaffolding up the side of a building uh, and have people working at height, the chances are it could be close to one pound 20 pence. A ground mounted array, um, so easy access. You're just building the, the structures. Um, it could be closer to 90 pence. So just a, a rule of thumb, a pound per watt. Correction factor. So if you actually have a quote from a contractor, um, what you can do is plus or minus add 
the value of the correction factor. So at the moment I have plus a thousand, give me a total value of uh, 360,000. But if I just simply minus that, it could be 340. So I, I'll aim a bit conservative, go a bit higher for the cost of the system. So a thousand panel system, 350 watt, uh, 360,000 pounds. Now, layout and angle of panels. This is probably the biggest um, variable for um, solar panels. So basically what we're saying here is in an ideal circumstance, your panels will be mounted at an angle of um, 35 to 40 degrees in the UK. And there would be no shading from trees, buildings or anything else. So they, your solar panels have a perfect view of the sun um, all, all day, basically, from a minimum of the panels are lying flat in a shaded area. You still get power out of them, but it wouldn't be as efficient as, you know, clear skies, optimum angle. So that gives us a range here um, of potential outputs. Uh, so I'm going to set it for middle of the road that we don't have a perfect angle, but they're not flat either. So I'm going to set it between 0.8 and 0.95. So fairly tight range. I actually give it a bit more oomph. So factor of 0.8 to 1. Now your when you get... Um, a contractor they will apply um, a slightly more scientific methodology um, to give you a factor so what we're saying here is the output even ideal will be a range between a minimum annual output and a maximum annual output some years are sunnier than others more clouds in the summer so what we're saying here for our uh, 350 kilowatt in an, on an annual basis we're going to get uh, 315,000 kilowatt hours up to a maximum of 350,000 kilowatt hours so that's a sort of rule of thumb for um, every hundred kilowatts you'd expect a hundred thousand kilowatt hours as a as a upper end of the scale. So we're saying a typical annual output will be 315,000 kilowatt hours. Then we enter business existing electricity supply. So what's your current kilowatt hours from your the last year? Your electricity supply capacity. So how much power can you take from the grid at one time? Your electricity daytime rate. Now, Currently, um, 22 is very good. The price of electricity will rise this year. How long it stays high, who knows? But the higher the electricity day rate you're paying, um, the better the payback. So if I put it at, say, 25, perhaps more realistic. And selling rate. There isn't a lot of money to sell electricity generated from solar panels at the moment 5p would you be doing well um, perhaps in current climate it might be a bit better but i'll just leave it at 5p just to give a good difference between the selling rate and let's say purchasing rate for the business requirements for supply capacity so current supply capacity is 100 kva What's required for the solar is, because it's such a big array, is 420 kVA. So you will need to upgrade your supply capacity to 420 kVA if you wish to export uh, solar power. Um, this is a conversation with your DNO. Um, best options usually just to um, build the solar panels to support your maximum summer demand because exporting is, is so little, but um, 
there may be changes in in rules to allow greater generation local generation so potential payback on solar panel array um, what we have here is a percentage of electricity generated used on premises so what we're asking here is how much of the generation particularly in summer will be actually used by your business or premises and then the balance will be exported so if I say all of it will be used on premises we can see here that the minimum savings on purchased electricity would be seventy thousand pounds value of sale zero cost of solar panels that was the figure earlier three hundred sixty thousand so a simple payback of five years if we say it's all exported you would get fourteen thousand pounds cost of the panels remains the same but the payback is 25 years so you can see as I move the scale up the savings on purchase electricity is what really drives the acquisition of solar panels now businesses will be using more electricity for potentially heating replacing gas with heat pumps and also EV charging so um, your current electricity demand may significantly increase in the coming years um, so that was um, our minimum return on investment for these figures using our typical we're at 5.44 years and optimistic output from the panels a little under five years 4.9 years so there will be a range of outputs each year so you need to set your your minimum maximum um, depends on how pessimistic you are um, six years is very good payback period for solar panels you're not going to get close to three years um, unless electricity prices rocket so if I say because we actually got a quote for another business if I put that to 30 pence and we're still took a year off so most optimistic 4.1 whereas previously 4.9 and we're at 5.14 when it was closer to six so um greenhouse gas protocol so currently using the figures entered 250 kilowatt hours is equivalent to 53 tons scope 2 scope 3 4.7 gives a total of 57 um generated from the solar panels that's equivalent to 66 tons 5.92 tons so 72 tons of um, offset so because we're actually generating more than we theoretically use um, it produced a negative 15 tons so um, basically we were carbon positive although it's negative carbon positive by 15 tons assuming all the uh, generation is actually used so if you would like a email copy um, enter your email address I'll put my services.com a text reference I'll just say um, video example happy to submit and I'll submit that you're taken to our actions from solar panel page with a quick summary of the um, results and a couple of videos worth watching solar panels Pandora's box and I'll just pause for that email to come in so this is the email that you will receive and comes from myself uh, this is the estimated output results for the solar panel so uh, summary results uh, minimum solar panel output 280 5.14 years typical 4.5 and maximum 4.1 and electricity savings physicality 
um, based on the parameters that you have entered and then greenhouse gas emissions and this is the reference that uh, you entered into the text box and then finally below that all the um, data that was entered into the uh, calculator so I hope you enjoyed that short presentation. Do use our solar panel calculator and check out our carbon footprint and EV charger calculators. Thank you very much.